Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video which is going to be my April Boxy Charm unboxing. I actually never got a chance to do my March unboxing because I got my Boxy Charm so so late in the month and so I'm just getting around to try it and so I'm going to include it in today's demo so you will also see the products that I got in my March box. So if you're ready to see the products that I got and also my thoughts as well as a demo on how I apply them to my face then let's get started. The first thing that I see in the box is the new and improved card insert. This time they have sort of a fold out pamphlet which has the month's theme, which is eye candy, the girls that selected their favorite products, as well as pricing information. There's also some coupons on the back that I will zoom in so that you can get those coupon codes if you're interested. Also, for the March theme, this is the old fashioned card that we used to get. The theme was vacation, and on the back side is the product information. I'm just gonna go in order as I would apply the products to the face. So, the first product that I received, and this was for April, is the Dr. Brand Pores No More vacuum cleaner and this is a pore purifying mask. This is a mask that's supposed to be used for five to ten minutes where after you cleanse your skin you apply a thin layer of the mask, leave it on for five to ten minutes until it dries. I applied this in the shower so I don't have a demo of me applying it but I do have a pretty good idea of how it works. At first I was a little bit nervous because I have a dry skin type and this seems to be sort of a detoxifying purifying mask to get rid of excess oil and I wasn't sure if it was going to work for me but since I applied it in the shower I feel like it never reached full dryness because I take a really hot shower is really steamy and so it never really solidified on my skin so to speak so it just remained like a very thin layer I also didn't apply very much because again I was worried that it was going to strip the oils from my skin I did notice that it does have a really cooling sensation as you let it sit and that was interesting afterwards I just rinsed it off and I took a look at my skin and it just seemed to be very clean I had no issues with my pores but I typically don't have issues with my pores so this isn't necessarily a product that I would buy for myself but if it comes in the box I certainly don't mind trying it. Ooh, according to the card this retails for $47 and so I certainly wouldn't purchase this for myself but it's interesting enough to try it out in the box. You only get one ounce of product. I didn't use very much again. I'll continue to use it, finish it up but it's not something I would buy and so nice to try but not for me. The next product that I applied were the South Main uh, gel packs and they're basically those rubbery masks that you put right underneath your eyes. These are supposed to reduce puffiness, dark circles, and moisturize your eye area. After using the mask and washing it off, I applied these to my under eyes while I was doing my hair and it says to leave it on for 30 minutes. And one of the things that I did like about the mask is that the gel pad actually stays put. It's not one of those slippery ones that runs all over the place where you basically have to sit still or lay down for half an hour because I just don't have that kind of time. So I found that I was able to apply them and do something else while they were working. Now again, an interesting product to try but not necessarily something I would buy because I just don't feel that a mask such as this could really reduce dark circles. Maybe puffiness but I don't suffer too much from under eye puffiness and so... For the moisturization, I did appreciate it, but I honestly didn't notice any difference with how my makeup applied today. And so again, an interesting product to try, but I'm a little bit wary about things like this and I wouldn't necessarily have bought it for myself. And this one was from the March box at $10. The next product I applied was from Tarte and this was in the April box. This is the Tarte Tardis Pro Glow Liquid Highlighter and mine came in the shade Exposed. I don't know if each box had a different shade, but I have seen other people receive this highlighter. It's just a liquid illusion illuminator and I tried to apply it underneath my foundation. There's a couple of different ways that you can use products like this. You can mix them with your foundation, you can put them directly on the skin, or you can use them afterwards as a highlight. So I didn't mix it with my foundation but I put it underneath and I actually really liked the way it looked underneath. When I first put it on, on like bare skin, and I chose to apply it with my fingertips to sort of just squeeze a little bit on the back of my hand and tap it on. It dries super, super fast. And so it was literally drying as I was applying it. It was a little bit streaky and I didn't like that at all. So I went over it with a powder highlight. And the highlight that you're seeing today is not so much from this, but from the Urban Decay Shape Shifter palette. So I like it underneath foundation. I just have to be careful not to put mattifying powders over them. So it destroys the luminosity. But I think it's an interesting product and one that I'm looking forward to trying some more. This one retails for $29 and I can't say I would buy that for 
$29 because you can get some from Anastasia or Makeup Forever at a much lower cost. I actually think I tried this product on first. This is the Brow Gal by Tanya Crooks and I've gotten this brand in my BoxyCharm before. I am currently using the Brow Setter in my current monthly makeup basket and I'm liking it okay. At first I thought it was dry. I really couldn't see anything coming out but I guess it's working okay. Now I tried this one today and I noticed that it comes in a shade, the brown hair number two. I guess they selected the number two shade to be most universal but I know that if you have very dark hair this isn't going to work for you and if you have very light hair this isn't going to work for you either. I liked it okay. Basically I filled in my brows with my Anastasia Brow Wiz and then I cleaned them up and I went in with this product. I actually really like the brush that it comes with. I was trying a similar product by Hourglass and I have to say that I think I like this one better. I could see the fiber volumizing a lot more with this one as well as the color a little bit more which is surprising since Hourglass is such an expensive brand. I'll continue to use this. It's not necessarily something that I'm going to seek out and repurchase because my brows are pretty full already and so I'm not really interested in the microfiber effect of it. I'm mostly just looking for something to hold my brows in place and so I'm most likely to just purchase a clear brow gel in the future. The next product I applied was from Pretty Vulgar and this is actually the second time I received Pretty Vulgar in my BoxyCharm and I'm really excited to try it a little bit more from their brand. I thought their liquid lipstick was fine. That's what I got in my BoxyCharm last time. But it was one of the metallic ones and not something that I reach for very often. This on the other hand is a very beautiful neutrally blush. The packaging is really pretty. I remember when everybody was reviewing this on YouTube because the brand was new to Sephora. I never purchased anything because I'm really wary about buying something that I've never seen or never swatched and so I just watched the reviews. I enjoyed them but I never actually made a purchase but actually I'm really glad to try it. The packaging is pretty but it's actually really lightweight and inside you have the powder. Now I know this one had two options. You could either get this shade or a really bright pink shade and the people who were receiving the pink one they were not really happy. I would have been happy with either one and this one is in the shade hush blush if you're interested and it was in my March box and this one retails for $26. I would have to say that I would have paid that much for the blush had I wanted to try it if I had seen it get like consistently good reviews but I think it's really pretty. It's a really pretty product. It's the one that I'm wearing. Very neutral kind of go with everything shade and it is a matte blush which is really nice to have in your collection so I would say that probably out of everything that I received in my box this has to be my favorite. Now both my April and my March boxes had eyeshadow palettes and the the April box was the one that was going to have a ColourPop palette and this is the palette that I received. It's the ColourPop Golden State of Mind palette and actually I already own this so this one is mine and so I decided to save the one that I got in my BoxyCharm for a future giveaway. We're really really close to 4,000 subscribers and I want to do a really nice giveaway and so I'm going to put this aside to include in that giveaway but in the meantime I did receive this one and it is something I already have so I'll be using this one in the demo and in March I received this one by Pure Cosmetics and this was the BoxyCharm and Pure collaboration palette. So I used both of them in the demo. Now as far as the BoxyCharm Pure palette, this is the one that they did when they sent all of the influencers on vacation um, somewhere in Mexico. I don't remember exactly where but this is the palette that they came up with and they were doing that trip to promote the palette. And so I applied both palettes to complete my eye look today and I also used this set of brushes that came in my BoxyCharm. There's three brushes by the the Vintage Cosmetics Company and this one was also from my March box. So with this palette I basically use the shade Perfect to set my eyeshadow base. I use the shade Nakey to work in the crease. I use the shade BFF on my lower lash line and I use the shade Duet to deepen my outer corner. Now I have used Pure Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes before. This one retails for $36 and I have to say that I don't think that this palette is worth $36. I think that maybe not necessarily this one but you can get a ColourPop palette for about $16 or $14 and I think that you would enjoy the quality of those palettes a little bit more than this one just because I found that this palette was a little bit dry and also I was having trouble getting the colors to stick so for example this one which is such a deep brown shade every time I applied it to my outer corner like it would be there and then I would blend a little bit and then it was gone or it had patches and so it was really challenging to work with this shade in the outer corner. I ended up doing sort of a spotlight eye and this is the shade that you see on the inner and outer third of my eye. And then the shade BFF is the one that I used on my lower lash line and as you can see it pulled a lot more pink than purple and on screen it looks 
pretty pink, but in the pan it looks a little bit more purpley and I had hoped that it would be a little bit more purpley. But in the end, I think that they worked out okay. I think that part of it was also that I was using these brushes and they're a little bit more stiff than brushes that I'm used to. And so they pick up the product but they don't blend it out really well. I know that they're selling this palette separately now and I honestly don't think you're missing out if you don't already have it. If you have it, it's okay. You can definitely make it work, but I think you'd be better off selecting a ColourPop palette that has a variety of matte metallic finishes. Now as far as the Golden State of Mind palette, these are shimmery palettes. They do require a sticky base for the shades to adhere to. The way I applied it today was with a little bit of setting spray and I went in with my fingers to apply the shade Heads or Tails and I apply that on the inner part of my eye. Now that is one of the few that has a lot of pigment in and of itself and so I could apply that to my bare lid as I had nothing on the center of my eye and it works out okay. This shade right here has a pink shift so it's a really interesting duochrome that is the shade girlfriend and then I also have the shade golden egg just tapped on the surface just for a little bit more dimension and that one is a little bit more powdery so I know this palette didn't generally do very well but if, if you consider it sort of as a topper eyeshadow palette then you might enjoy it a little bit more I would say complete your eye look with whatever colors that you want and then go over top with some of these also over a sticky base because then it adds a lot of shimmer and it's actually really multi-dimensional I would say that it's just a varying range of metalized shadows and just varying degrees of metallic shadows that you have here so you can give your looks a lot of dimension and also a lot of sparkle if you're into a little bit of a sparkly eye look. Now I had hoped for either the precious metals or the a light blue one. I forget what it's called, Walking on Air or something like that. It was a blue one. It was limited edition. They no longer carry it. It was a larger palette like this one it's because those are the only two that I don't have from ColourPop, but I'm happy to have another one of these because then I can put that one in my giveaway and continue to enjoy my personal palette. Now, according to the pamphlet, the Golden State of Mind palette retails for $26, but with ColourPop, there's always sales and you can get it for a little bit less. You saw me also use the brushes to apply the makeup. They're pretty brushes. They're not necessarily expensive looking brushes or expensive feeling brushes. These are supposed to retail for $23.15 and I don't think I would pay that much. Maybe $10. Again, I think that they're okay for picking up product. I preferred the step one brush, which is kind of like a shader brush and also the step three brush, which was for smudging eyeshadows. But this angled one, I didn't really like. I was having trouble picking up that brown shade and I tried another brush later and the brown shade still didn't pick up but I just, I don't know, I don't like the shape and density of this brush. They're also a little bit stiff and so it doesn't blend out shadow very well. It has a density, uh, has a tendency to put the shadow on and then it doesn't blend out. It creates harsh lines in your eye look and so these are not my favorite. I'll keep them around since they're synthetic brushes. I can use them for creams or something else but not really my favorite. From my March box, I did get this uh, Butter London Double Decker Lashes Mascara. It's good that I got it because actually for my monthly makeup basket, I forgot to pull out a black mascara for my upper lashes and so I'm glad to add this one. Now this is supposed to create 200% thicker lashes and a 314 increase in lash curl. I didn't really see any of that. I mean, not that I measured, but it just it's just a typical mascara. It retails for $20 and I think that I like my benefit there real mascara a lot more or even the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise from the drugstore despite the fact that, that that one dries out really fast. I'm gonna use it. I'm glad I got to try it out because I think that this is a lot of people's favorite mascara. It does have a natural bristle brush and it's relatively thick and I would describe the formula of this one as a more dry formula and so I think it's okay. And my last product that was from my April box, this one is the Adest New York High Definition Liquid Lipstick and I know better than to look for the shade on this particular product as everybody who's unboxing I've watched. None of them can find the shade name because it's just nowhere on the product so I went online to the company's website and I was able to see that this shade that I got is most likely called Hoot Coco, which I think is such a cute name. I really like that name. So this liquid lipstick is basically, if you know about the Lamarck Liquid Lip Cremes by Marc Jacobs, it's sort of a creamy lipstick. So it is a liquid lipstick. It has a doe foot applicator, but it doesn't ever really dry down. So it is really comfortable, but as a result, it's not going to be budge proof or transfer proof. 
The main difference between the Marc Jacobs and this one is that this one has more of a glossy finish where I would describe the Marc Jacobs as more of a satin or velvety finish and so this just has a different feel to it. It does smell really good. It has your typical sort of vanilla scent and it's comfortable. I definitely had a meal while I was wearing it and I reapplied without any trouble. I believe these come in about six different shades and they retail for $24 which I think is kind of pricey because the Marc Jacobs one are about the same price and I have to say I like those better because they have a tendency to stay put a little bit better. This one I think moves around just a little bit more than the Marc Jacobs one but still it was really nice to try out the lip product and it's good. I like this one. I would say that out of my April box this is my favorite product followed probably by the brow fibers actually. That's everything for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing how the products applied as well as my little mini review views and first impressions on all of the products that I tried. Hopefully you didn't mind that I combined March and April into one video, but I'll definitely try to edit it so that it's not too too long. Let me know if you enjoyed it by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I hope you're having a lovely one and I will see you again very very soon on my next one. Bye bye!